Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about queues in Java. So again taking it back to the time when we discussed about the collections framework, we briefly discussed about the queue interface and what is the property of the of a particular queue. So queues were again inspired from real life queues which you form when you whenever you try to go to a, a particular place where you want to get your things done you generally stand in a queue and this queue interface is directly inspired from that particular scenario itself that it works on a FIFO arrangement. So now if you think about the FIFO arrangement and let's connect it back to the previous lecture where we discussed about stacks and we said that stacks are a LIFO arrangement. So in case of a LIFO arrangement, you had the last in first out philosophy, but in case of queues, you have the first in first out philosophy. It means the first element which enters the queue will be the first element removed from the queue. That is the basic premise around which the queue uh, interface or the queue collection is formed. So remember that particular concept Whenever you have a situation in your project where you need to implement this kind of mechanism that the element which got inside the collection should be the first one coming out of the collection, then you should be always thinking about queues. Whereas if you have an arrangement where the last element inserted should be the first element out of the collection, then in that case, you should think about stacks. So remember the value proposition of each of these collection types which will help you take a decision as to which particular uh, collection to be used in which scenario. So talking about queue, queue is again an interface. Again, like I said, uh, we, are we are very soon going to cover the concept of classes and interfaces and abstract classes. So just hold tight on that particular concept, but connecting it again back to the theory lecture where we talked about the collections framework, you can think of an interface as a, just a blueprint, just a skeleton with nothing concrete implementation details inside that interface. So the queue is again an interface and there are few implementations of it. One of the most popular implementation of queue interface is a priority queue class. So the priority queue class is again, technically it is a queue, which basically works on the concept of first in first out. But at the same time, it also works on a priority. You can assign a priority to the elements, uh, which will decide when uh, which element is going to come first and which which element is going to come second and that concept is basically again governed by the same natural ordering logic which we have been seeing in other ordered collections like tree set and tree map. So that's the basic idea about priority queue and let me take you to a hands on example so that you can relate it better. So here I have uh, a class which is called queue demo. It has a public static void main method and then at line number nine. I'm initializing the queue. I'm saying that this particular queue should hold only string objects and it is a type of priority queue. And like I mentioned, if you use priority queue, you can see the import of it here. Uh, if, if you see the priority queue, then you get that natural sorting or natural order, ordering logic phenomena out of the box. Because we are using strings here, so Java already knows how to sort strings and it is going to sort strings in the alphabetical sorting order. If you are providing a custom class of yours, maybe let's say queue of students, then in that case, you need to tell Java how to sort those elements. And like I mentioned in the previous sessions, we are going to cover in detail about how do we write that sorting, we provide that sorting uh, implementation or sorting logic to Java in case of custom classes, but we'll cover that when we'll cover about that sorting logic. For now, for the demo's sake, we are just taking a string or a queue of strings basically, which is of type priority queue. And then again, uh, following the same example as we saw in the case of stacks, just so that you can uh, build some sort of similarity. I'm again inserting few strings here, which are country names. So at first I'm inserting India, then I'm inserting Germany, and then I'm inserting America. So I have basically added three entries into this particular queue. Then at line 15, I'm just printing the queue and I just want you to see if I inserted elements in this order where India with an I go first, Germany with a G goes second and America with an A goes third. And if it is a priority queue, does it automatically sort the elements or not? So let's first observe that part and let me comment the rest of the code 
we will cover the rest of the code slowly so that we build a sort of cognitive flow. So let me comment this code and let's just print the queue for now. So I'm inserting the elements into the queue and just printing the element. Queue has a concept of head and tail. Remember that. So the very first element in the queue is, is basically the head and the very last element is the tail. So whenever you see the term head and tail, you can remember that head is the first element and tail is the last element. So now let's try to run this code and see what happens if you just print the queue as is. You're not iterating over it. You are not accessing any particular element, but you're just printing it. So if you do this, we see the output here, which says original queue. This particular one says America, India and Germany. Now this might be looking confusing, right? Because if I apply natural sorting, then America should come first, which is okay. Then Germany should come because after A, the G is the, is the, is the next natural alphabet starting point and then India should come. But we see India in the middle here. The reason is because when you call this, call this inside the system.out.println method, let me just go back. If you print it inside this particular uh, system.out.println method, automatically when you try to print a variable, it's two string method is called. So technically under the hood, this is what is getting called though we don't need to write the two string but the moment you try to print any variable inside the system.out.println automatically its two string method is getting called and in the interesting part is if you call the two string method it will call the abstract collection classes two string method which does not understand sorting so remember that very well if you are working with priority queues then in that case if you just try to print the queue you will not get the natural order but once you try to add or elements or remove elements or peak the elements in those cases, you will get the natural ordering sequence. But if you just print the queue as is, you will not be able to get the natural order and it will be random order. That's why you see a random order, but let's try to build our understanding around the natural order. So once we have printed the queue, now let's understand the other method of the queue, which is the remove method. And if you remember, I told you that this is a FIFO queue. So if you try to remove an element, the head of the queue is going to get removed. The head in this case is this string America, which should be removed from this particular collection if I call remove method. So I'm just calling the remove method and then printing the remo remaining queue. Again, this queue will be printed in random fashion, but if it is respecting the priority queue's natural ordering sequence, then America should get removed once I call remove. So let's verify our understanding. So I can see the queue after removing the head element remains as Germany and India. These are the elements which are left now and America is removed from this particular queue now. So that verifies our understanding that when you call remove, the head of the queue will be removed and the head will be the alphabetically sorted first element of the queue. There's another interesting method in the queue similar to stacks. We have a peak method. If you just want to view which element is sitting at the head of the queue, if you just want to view it, you don't want to remove the element, but you just want to view the element. In that case, you can call the peak method. So I'm just calling q.peak and storing the output of q.peak into a variable called head and then just printing the head. So let's see what happens in this case. Okay, so I'm getting this message which says head of the queue is Germany because Germany is now the new head after America was removed from this particular collection. So that is our head. And like I said, whenever you call these methods, these will respect natural sorting order. Sys out will not respect natural sorting order. Remember that. Another interesting method is poll. So poll method is basically used to remove the element and also return the element. So you can see which is the uh, head and it will also remove the head both at the same time. But in case of remove, you were just removing the element. You were not able to see which element was removed. In this case, you will be able to see which element is sitting at the head and also at the same time, the head will also be removed. So for that, you need to call the poll method. So I'm calling q.poll and storing this again in the, in the same variable head. So the head variables value will get just overwritten if I reuse it again and then I'm printing the removed head. Let's see. So I'm right. I'm just running this application again and I see this message uh, removed head Germany, which is coming from here. So when you call the q.poll, the current head of the queue got removed, which was Germany, and it also was returned from the poll method. So you can store the removed element and use that removed element for, for further processing in your program. And after that, only one element in the queue should be remaining, which is India. 
So at the last line number 26, I'm just printing the remaining parts, portions of the queue. So yes, now only India is remaining. So you can see all the outputs here. This was where we started from. Uh, then we removed the head element of the queue. So this element got removed and we were left with Germany and India. You can see here India Germany was in this order and here the order was changed because it is random order when you use it on the sysout. Then uh, we wanted to just get the head of the queue, but we did not want to remove it. So we used the peak method and we got Germany. Then we wanted to remove the head. So we removed the head with the help of poll method and it also returned the removed element, which is Germany. And after the removal, the queue looks like this, which is having just one element left in the queue. And in this case, the head and the tail both is India in this case. So this string will be both the head and the tail. This is a special case if the, if the queue has only one element left. So this is all I wanted to cover in the case of uh, queues. And uh, like I mentioned in the, all the previous sessions as well, do go and check out the Java Docs API of the queue interface and the priority queue classes. Learn and just get familiar with all the different methods which are available in this class so that when you start using these queues types or these collection types, you, rem you know what all utilities and methods are available. And even if you don't know, like I always mentioned, if you just do dot here, it will automatic any, any good IDE will automatically show you all the methods which are available here. Uh, which you can read about in the documentation here and understand what each method does and you can use that method as well. So that is also possible. So that's it. I wanted to, that's all I wanted to cover in today's lecture. And in the next session, we are going to talk about classes and objects. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.